So the rear shock is called the Mara. Um, a Mara is a Buddhist demon, basically. And you can see in the graphic, there's the Buddhist demon face. <laughs> the idea behind the Mara was that we needed a rear shock that matched the new fork. It needed to match in the adjustments, the range of adjustment, how it works, and the intended use. So that's where the Mara came from. So obviously it's a piggyback. You have high speed and low speed compression externally adjustable. You have a platform, which we labeled work for climbing, party for going downhill, external rebound. Inside here, we developed a new IFP. And this IFP is different than a traditional IFP, where a normal traditional IFP is actually a rigid structure. This one's flexible. So we did a lot of work with SKF to develop this IFP. When you look at the center, the center actually flexes. And the reason behind that is that when you get into small bumps, low frequency type bumps, the, the center of the IFP will actually flex, which gives you small bump sensitivity before you hit a bigger bump and the IFP has to move. So you get a little flex out of the center before the whole thing shifts. The other key piece of this and something that I was uh, very adamant about with the engineers was that it has to be easily serviceable and tunable by the end user. So anybody with a basic suspension knowledge can tune this rear shock. This shim stack that I pulled out of the IFP is the platform. So all you need to do is you reduce the pressure in your IFP, you unthread it, and you pull this out. And here's your shim stack for it. You can lighten the shim stack, you can make the shim stack stiffer, you can be completely locked out, or it can be just a small stiffness improvement in the compression. The way that it all works is that each one of these circuits is different. A traditional piggyback shock, your rebound, your high and low speed compression, and even your platform run through one circuit inside, which is great for manufacturing. It's really easy to manufacture that way. But the problem is when you adjust rebound, it'll affect compression and vice versa. The only way to make a shock that's completely independent is to have different circuits. So compression runs on a different circuit than a rebound, and platform runs on a different circuit than everything else. So all the independent circuits on the inside. That's your platform. This is your high and low speed compression. So you can unthread it from the, the top cap, change your shim stack, put it back in, rider serviceable. Super easy. Now to do this, all you have to do is let out your main pressure. And you're going to need to do it on the side. Don't do it on the bike, because as soon as you pull this out, oil is going to come out. <laughs> so if you do it on the side, you can lift it straight out carefully, and you don't have any oil escaping. You put it back in, and you're done. To change the platform, you let your IFP pressure out, and then you're going to have to hold the shock this direction. You unthread it, that pops out, you put it back in, you thread this back on, the other thing that the engineers um, worked on was the IFP pressure. Typical IFP pressures are 200, 250 PSI. So our IFP pressure is only 150. So you can actually do it with a shock pump. If you decide to tune your platform and you let your IFP pressure out, from the factory it's a nitrogen charge, but you don't have to put nitrogen back in it when you're done tuning. You can just pump it up with air at 150 PSI and you're done. That's it. So the Mara is available in metric um, and trunnion. So you, any configuration up to an overall eye to eye length of 230 millimeters all the way down to I think it's 105 is the shortest one you can get. So you can cover any traditional non-crazy bike on the planet.